All right, I'll start recording. So um, hopefully we get Kanaya back because I know she is probably trying to get caught up too. But Janiani, I know you are a little bit behind. Denaira as well. Um, Denaira, I don't know if you've stepped away or not, but this will also be up on YouTube later today. Um, so what I'm going to do, rather than, because I know you guys are both behind and trying to get caught up, rather than kind of like keep going with, you know, the stuff for checkpoint three. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to go over everything that's due so far. Um, and then kind of treat today, like I said, more like kind of an afternoon lab and give you guys time to kind of get caught up on that stuff. Um, so that way, when we come back next week on Tuesday, you guys will kind of be more on track. Um, and I'll still show you guys what, um, you know, we're working on to get started on checkpoint three. But, you know, if you want to use the bulk of your time to get caught up on checkpoints one and two, um, feel free to do that. Right. Oh, good. Can I welcome back? All right. So can I was just saying that we're going to get started with, um, you know, first period stuff now. Hang on. <coughs> Excuse me. And because um, most of you are all a little bit behind on either one or both of the, <coughs> oh, geez, one or both of the checkpoints so far, rather than jump right into the next lesson, yeah, Shamir, welcome, celebrity appearance. Excuse me. Shadi, you actually picked uh, a good day to attend because we have a good bit of uh, people in here that are also behind. So we're going to kind of do like a catch up day today. So I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to go over all the checkpoints that are due, what you're doing on them. Um, and then I'll finish with going over, you know, what's going to be due next week, the new thing we're working on to get us started on checkpoint three. Um, and then I'm going to give you guys the bulk of the time today to just kind of get that stuff done, right? And get caught up so that everybody's on track excuse me, for next week, all right? So if you have questions as I'm going through this, please don't be afraid to stop me or put it in the chat or uh, anything like that, okay? But, and again, this is also being recorded, so it'll be up on the Yes Philly YouTube later today. So if you miss it or you have to step away, um, You want to make sure you check there. Okay. So all of our checkpoints are up on Summit. All right. You should all be assigned to them. All right. The first two have to deal with the two short stories we read. Okay. So first one says reading journal, Gift of the Magi. Okay. It looks like this once it comes up. All right, so all this check one, and I think, um, can I, you ha I have already finished this one, so good job. But on this check one, you're doing two different things, right? You are filling out this chart, and then you're filling in these blanks. With the chart, it's giving you, you know, a symbol or a detail from the story on this side. And on this side of the chart, you're telling me, you know, what's the meaning behind that symbol or that detail? What is its you know, bigger significance to the characters or to the story as a whole, right? And if you go back and look at the old class recordings on the yes, SPHILA YouTube from, you know, the ones from like April, I go over how to do the first box on this chart with everybody. So you can watch that video, pause it, copy down what I put into my chart, and then use that as an example, all right? So that is what you're gonna do for the first part of this checkpoint. 
the second part, you're just kind of filling in these blanks, right? So it's giving you one of the problems from the plot of the story, like this one up here it says, Della doesn't have enough money to buy Jim a present for Christmas. So that's her problem. What is her solution? What does she decide to do to solve that problem? That's what you're putting on this line, all right? And then you're doing the same thing here for this line. You know, Jim doesn't have enough money to buy Della a present. So what does he decide to do? And then because of that, what is their new problem? And then what is their new solution to that problem, right? You're filling in all those blanks, okay? And then lastly, tell me how is this story an example of situational irony, which we talked about in class. And remember is when you expect one thing to happen, but what actually happens is something totally different, okay? So that's what you're doing for checkpoint one. Questions on that before we keep going. All right, awesome. So to access the story for checkpoint one, right? You can also get that from Summit. If you are on checkpoint one and you scroll down to the bottom under resources, you should see one that says gift of the Magi text like this, okay? When you click this link, it'll bring you to a page that looks like this. And here's where you can access the story, okay? All right. Uh, I know it seems like it's long, but it's really not that bad, and it reads pretty quickly, you know, once you get into it, because there's a lot of dialogue and stuff. Um, so uh, this is where you can access the story to complete that checkpoint, and then that is checkpoint one, okay? Again, questions on that. Who did we lose? We lost Kanai again. She must have service going in and out. All right, so that is checkpoint one, all right? Checkpoint two, right underneath, also assigned to you guys on Summit. It's called Reading Throughout My Life with the Wave. So very similar checkpoint one. We're also utilizing a short story that we are then kind of responding to questions about. So if you click on the checkpoint, it looks like this, all right? And again, kind of two different tasks to do. Uh, with this checkpoint. The first one uh, is pretty simple matching. So you have this key um, of, you know, elements from the story down here, and you're matching them with the description that you think best um, goes along with them. So for example, Octavio Paz is the first one. So if you look at that and look at the key down here, which of these do you think is the closest match to Octavio Paz? Put that letter on the line here, okay? Actually take your time, go through this. Don't just guess and put random letters because I will send it back to you because I've already had a couple of people do that. Uh, if you read through the story or you were in the story you know, or in class following along with the story, the, you should be able to do this, no problem, okay? That's the first part. Second part of the checkpoint down here, you're just kind of answering these open-ended questions in your own words and complete sentences, all right? So how is my life with the wave an example of an allegory? That's something we talked about in class. You know, an allegory is a story that uses a symbol, like an object or an animal or something like that to represent a bigger theme or a bigger idea, kind of like Moby Dick with the whale or Life of Pi with the tiger, you know, things like that, okay? So how is my life with the wave an example of that? Right? And then you're going to answer these other two questions here. Why do you think the author chose to use a wave to symbolize this relationship? What are the similarities between their relationship and you know, a real life relationship between two people? What's the connection we can make? And then lastly, what do you think the theme or message the author uses the wave to symbolize is? What does that wave represent? Okay, So that's what you're doing for this checkpoint. And again, you can access that story right from Summit as well. If you scroll all the way down, you'll see it says my life with the wave text and you click the link and it brings you to the page with the story right here. This one a little bit shorter than Gift of the Magi. Uh, I think maybe about the same length, I'm not sure. 
And again, there's also class recordings of me reading through this story, talking about it, stopping at certain points. So again, always a good place to start is looking at those older class recordings to help you kind of get started or get more information, okay? So that's where you can access the story and then you fill both parts out on the checkpoint and then you are good for checkpoint two, okay? Questions on that, questions on checkpoint two or anything like that, all right? Gianni, Shad, Denira, this is making sense. You guys are still good. Cool. Thank you, Denira. All right. So that's checkpoint one and two. Those are the ones that are overdue at this point, okay, that most of you are behind on. If you get caught up on those, what you can do next is you can go to checkpoint three, which has just been assigned to you guys, all right? And don't click on the actual checkpoint up here. Instead, scroll down and you should see something that says art proposal brainstorm. And if you click that, it'll look like this, okay? And what you're doing here is you're kind of filling out each box based on the prompt it's asking you on this side. And it all has to do with love, right? Because that's what this whole project is about. We've read two short stories about love and talked about, looked at, you know, what are the ways and the kind of literary tools the authors use to convey how they think and feel about love. So now you're going to do the same thing with a form of art of your choosing, a song, um, a story, a poem, a dance, whatever it might be, okay, a drawing. So you're going to kind of fill this brainstorm out to help give you a better idea of which one of those you want to do for your final product. So most of these prompts are pretty self-explanatory, okay? When it gets to the middle part down here, um, it's asking you to write, you know, an example of each of these types of figurative language about love, okay? So there is class recordings on YouTube from yesterday of me kind of going over this um, in class, going over what each one of these are. So you can check there for a little bit of a review if you are if you forget what a metaphor is, what a simile is, all right? Stuff like that. Right? And we can also, we'll also go over this again on Tuesday, hopefully after everybody is more caught up with the other two checkpoints. But I just wanted to show you this and let you know, okay, if you finish checkpoints one and two and get caught up, this is what you're working on next. And again, you can find it on Summit under checkpoint three. And if you scroll down, it should be the first link called Art Proposal Brainstorm, okay? So that is everything that we have due so far that I know you guys are trying to get caught up on, right? So I'm gonna put that list of stuff in the chat, all right? Checkpoint one, checkpoint two, and uh, proposal. Hey, welcome back, can I? Good morning, Shamir. I know I said celebrity guest, right? What a pleasure to see your name. That's all right, can I? No worries, can I? My internet has been acting up lately too. Yeah, Mr. V and I were talking while we were waiting for people to come in and he froze for like a full minute. Oh, I'm sorry. I know it's that is annoying. Very annoying. Yeah, it could be a pain. All right. So everything that is due, I put a list in the chat. Uh, and I will also put in the chat the link to the Yes Philly YouTube channel. Because I always say that's a great place to go to get started getting caught up um, watching previous class recordings. Because then you can get some more detail on the excuse me, on the checkpoints, um, pause it, copy down what I'm doing, use it as, as an example, whatever you need, okay? So 
because most of you are a little bit behind, like I said, this is kind of what we're going to do today. So we have about um, 30 minutes left, which is more than enough time for you guys to get done with at least one of these checkpoints, okay? Or no, I know checkpoints one and two both involve reading through that story. Um, so if that's what you want to spend your time on is just reading through one of the stories, that's fine. If you want to watch some of the old class recordings on YouTube and try and work through the checkpoint and get caught up that way, um, that's fine. If you want to tackle the brainstorm for checkpoint, you know, that's part of checkpoint three that I have listed there and showed you guys, and then, you know, focus on getting caught up on the other checkpoints over the weekend, you can do it that way too. So that way you'll be, you know, caught up with, you know, what we're doing now and then you know, you can go back and finish the other, other stuff that's overdue. And then when we come back on Tuesday, you'll have it all done and ready to go. So however you choose to do it now is up to you because I know some people have laptops with them right now. Some of us don't. Um, so whatever you want to do is up to you, but I'm going to give you guys the rest of this time this morning to kind of get caught up um, on those checkpoints and stuff like that. So please use this time wisely. The more you do now, the less you'll have to do over the weekend unless you'll have to cram you know when we get to the end of the term i'd like to remind you guys like you really don't ever have homework if you just do your work in class so i i would find that motivating just get it over with do it whoa yeah I know you can't always do it at the time but when you can yeah exactly and denier i know you're kind of running around right now um because i just saw your chat that's fine so some a good thing to do right now then because you're just on your phone and you're not at home would be to maybe start with going back and watching some of those old recordings on the youtube channel just to kind of get that in your head of like okay this is how we do checkpoint one because you watched me go over it from that class recording and then same thing for checkpoint two and so on and so forth that's a good thing to do now and then when you get home and you're at your laptop you'll already kind of have that and you're like okay i remember how we did this and then you can just knock out the checkpoint. Because that's something that a lot of people, I feel like we kind of use that as not an excuse, but we'll say like, oh, well, I'm not home right now. I don't have my laptop, mama. But you can always access YouTube on your phone, right? So if you can't do the actual checkpoint because you don't, you know, you're not at your computer, um, you know, you can always go back and watch those old videos and kind of see how to do it. So that way, when you get to your computer and you get home, you're already you know, that much closer and you don't have to, you know, then, you know, watch the videos and also then work on the checkpoint at home and kind of do one and then the other. So just some friendly uh, neighborhood teacher advice, right? But yes, yeah, right. so we got about 25-ish minutes. So I'm going to be here on mute and let you guys kind of work to get caught up on these. I'll check in on your summits periodically to see if you're working on anything. Um, if you have questions as you're going through this, please don't be afraid to give me a shout and uh, then we'll wrap up uh, shortly before uh, 1025, okay? And then don't forget later this afternoon, 30. Hey, Yo, guys, hey. What's up, what's up? I, I, was just busy. I was just busy, so that's why I'm a little late. I hear you. I appreciate you. Did you have a good day, Tyson? Yeah, I waited. I waited twenty minutes for them just to join the link that they sent me last week. All right, they didn't. A two-minute conversation of six ten, which is June.